I'm not really sure what the P stands for in P1000s. So I asked my friend Alvin who works for SimMagic and he told me that it stands for pedals. But I don't think that is the case here. On June 2023, these pedals were released and shortly after, so were the haptic reactors. Then on August, these pedals evolved further with the addition of inverted set and the hydraulic brake module. Then they were available as the two set or three set pedal with and without the hydraulics. And now we have this, the PHTS or the hydraulic throttle module, which made me think that if a product gets so many add-ons and undergoes so many evolutions, it could only mean one thing. The P stands for Pokemon. Pick a P. No, no, just think about it. Don't Pokemons usually get better after an evolution? Like Pichu becomes Pikachu and Pikachu becomes Raichu or Charmander becomes Charmeleon and Charmeleon becomes Charizard. I hope you see where I'm going with this. With each respective evolution, a Pokemon not only becomes better, but sometimes gains an ability or two or becomes an entirely different species. Similarly, P1000 was introduced as a little brother to P2000s. But over time with add-ons, it now bears the potential to rival some of the best pedals on the market, including its older brother. So let's start with the build quality and attention to detail. Right out of the box, I was impressed by the looks of these pedals. And coming from Husingweld Sprint, I have been waiting for these for a while now because of the effortless modularity it offers. And the added bonus is that it comes in black, minus the chamfered edges and the exposed spring and the heel stop and well, it's mostly black. What I was worried about was the cluster of wires because of the add-ons, but the design is really clever and the team deserve kudos because it is hard to spot a single wire. I had to look for them to find out where they actually were. Even the control box is hiding underneath. This clean and organized design makes it really hard not to fall in love with. Now, like most pedals in the market, they are made out of CNC machined aluminium. The face plates have these chamfered edges, which in my opinion serves two purposes. First, for aesthetics, and second, for safety. If you belong to the socks gang and your feet somehow slips out and gets strapped between the pedals, there is a good chance that you might end up with some scrapes. These thick plates with chamfered edges reduces the odds of that happening. Also, they have a slight grainy texture, which feels great. I too belong to the socks gang and some people have mentioned that these screw holes can get a bit uncomfortable. I haven't found that to be the case, so your mileage may vary. Also, there are these markings on the back of the pedal arms, which goes hand in hand with the whole clean and tidy design language. All of its exterior looks and feels great, but it needs to be tested. Given my love for inanimate objects, I was hesitant to test them out, but I did it anyways. I hammered the pedals with my feet and abused them for days without a care in the world. I thought that maybe the ball bearings or a washer or anything would creak or come loose, but nothing happened. They are very well built. Everything is great except the heel plate. I'm not sure why, but it felt small. And in my opinion, it should have been a bit longer. My heels rest on the edge of the plate. And for reference, I have the heel plate from my Husingweld Sprint. Despite both of them sharing roughly the same dimensions, it somehow feels short. It may or may not be an issue for you, but even after getting used to it, my heels slipped out frequently. With all of this out of the way, let's focus on the highlight of the video. Alongside many other add-ons available for these pedals, the PHTS is the newest one. This is a hydraulic damper for the throttle pedal and is somewhat similar to what you would get on a P2000 by default. Personally, hydraulic throttle was an alien terminology to me. And upon trying it, I got to experience something which increased my immersion within minutes. It provides a damped feel to the throttle and has a controlled rebound effect. Unlike a spring, which exerts a constant restoring force when pushed. This little thing dampens those forces. If you are someone like me who prefers heavy throttle, but does not want to deal with the heavy rebound effect, this can be a great addition. Especially if you belong to the Sox gang. It has six levels of damper values with one being the lightest and six being the heaviest, all of which can be adjusted with this knob. The mechanism isn't exactly what you might have seen in a hydraulic brake. 
This system uses a nitrogen gas spring. I'm not sure of the exact mechanism inside it, but I think the rod is attached to a piston inside, moving within a sealed cylinder containing pressurized nitrogen. Even though the name suggests otherwise, it doesn't have an actual spring inside of it. If you're wondering why nitrogen, well, because it is an inert gas, unlike oxygen. So moisture buildup, corrosion, reaction based on temperature changes won't be an issue. When pushed, it emits a bit of a squirting sound, which isn't audible unless you're putting it next to your ear. Now obviously this isn't something which belongs next to your ear, so let's put it where it actually belongs. Installing it is really easy and will hardly take a minute. Remove any preload, take off the clevis pin and throw away the throttle. Now simply slide this in, put the clevis pin back and you're done. Now this is a $140 add-on which won't necessarily make you faster but will provide a more realistic feel. Realistic is a subjective term and you might pick springs over this, which is completely fine. But for those who are always finding ways to increase immersion, this is something to look out for. But the bigger question is, is it worth it? And how does it stack up against the usual spring-loaded throttle? In order to get these answers, we will be taking help from Mother Physics. And here's the thing, no matter what quality of spring a manufacturer uses in their product, at the end of the day, it will still be a spring with two basic movements, compression and elongation. But when it comes to pedals, the springs are compressed rather than elongated. So we will be focusing on that. Now, most pedals, if not all pedals, are equipped with linear springs, meaning the coils are equally spaced out. Which means for every inch of compression, the force required would be the same. For instance, 5 newtons of force for 1 inch, then 10 newtons for 2, 15 newtons for 3, and so on. This force required to push or compress a spring by 1 inch is called a spring rate. But I'm not here to talk about springs. What I'm trying to talk about is that no matter what, a linear spring in throttle usually cannot provide a progressive feel, because it is not in its nature. And that is where the hydraulic throttle comes in. I jumped back and forth between hydraulics on level 1 and the hardest throttle spring. Not the clutch springs, hardest throttle springs, with preload set to my liking. And between both of them, I preferred hydraulics more because it was able to provide similar weight on the pedal, minus the instant compression and rebound effect. Now don't get confused. Just because the compression and rebound is damped does not mean it travels slowly. What it means is that PHTS offers a little bit of friction. Now you might ask why would you want to replace your springs? And that is an excellent question. I will answer that in two parts. Experience and physics. Since experience is a subjective topic, I'll explain my perspective. Let's assume that you play multiple disciplines, such as GT3 and formula racing or even rallying. Now, depending on the level of immersion you want and how serious you are regarding replicating real life and the car's feel and overall behavior, you would want to adjust the travel distance and resistance of the brake and throttle pedal. I know this sounds really weird because people don't normally do that. But if you were to change the throttle resistance, depending on the disciplines you're playing, you would have to change the spring. Assuming you're running a bit of preload with the hardest spring available, which sounds like a lot of work. But in here, all you have to do is just turn this knob to increase or decrease the resistance, which saves a lot of time. And honestly, to me, these on level 1 felt better than springs. I prefer level 6 for rallying, level 1 or 2 for track racing. Now onto the physics part. You see, I've never been a fan of soft pedals. And even on my sprints, I run a heavy throttle. But with that comes a constant heavy force applied by your foot. And I'm sure you're all familiar with Newton's third law, which dictates that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Meaning, the harder you push a spring, the harder it would want to return to its usual form. And that is exactly what Hooke's law tells us as well. I know it is starting to get a bit complicated now, but bear with me. All of it is going to make sense. So like I was saying, a spring would exert the same amount of force that you have applied to try to get back to its normal state. And that heavy restoring force is what is damped in the hydraulic throttle because it does not have a spring, which results in better throttle control. But if you are someone who likes to blip the throttle too often, 
then I would say either use the damper at level 1 or 2 or stick to springs. Now some people would prefer springs over this, which is completely fine because personal preference. But in my opinion, this is a fantastic add-on. And like I mentioned earlier, that I went back and forth between springs and hydraulic, I noticed that I have better control over my car while using hydraulics. In rallying, I can be a bit more precise with the throttle input, which helped me break some of my personal records. In track racing, however, the results were more or less the same. But that is more of a skill issue. Now let's talk about the brake, because it blew me away. And let me tell you why. You see, a lot of manufacturers have their own sense of an optimal braking feel. VRS uses a linear spring, Husingwild Sprint has a combination of spring and elastomer, so does the VNM light pedals. But SimMagic decided to take a different route with these tiny chopped olive-shaped elastomers. Now if you have browsed Reddit, you might have seen the pedal conundrum before P1000s came out. It mostly came down to either Sprint or VRS. And the deciding factor was mostly braking feel. Some of them switched over to VRS, while some tried it and moved back to Sprint. But why am I telling you about this? Because subjectivity and preferences. VRS's brake pedal provides a smooth and uniform feel because the spring isn't working with anything else in conjunction. Meaning, midway it won't automatically feel different. Sprint, on the other hand, can feel different for the initial 30 to 40 percent then feel like something else for the remaining portion. Because after the elastomer is compressed, the spring and spacers get compressed, which may change the feel midway. Now you can opt to use elastomer here to get a uniformish feel, but it won't change the effect. The spring will still be the next thing after two elastomers. This change can be better explained with an example. I'm sure you're all familiar with a pizza. And despite the entire base made out of the same dough, sometimes the crust gets treated a bit differently. Even though it is an integral part of said pizza, some choose not to eat it because they prefer a uniformity in flavor, mouthfeel, consistency, texture, etc. But it doesn't matter whether you like the crust or not. It doesn't change the fact that it is indeed a part of the pizza. Don't take this example too seriously. I'm just explaining the two-stage braking feel of spring paired with elastomer. And because it is a matter of preference, some people are going to choose only springs and some the combination of spring and elastomers, whichever feels natural to them. SimMagic has decided to ditch the springs altogether and these chopped olives help you to provide an even feel from beginning to the end, without you feeling a sudden change in resistance or experiencing the two-part braking feel. Obviously, a lot of people won't get to experience the two-part braking unless they have tried a brake pedal with only springs or only elastomers. After getting used to P1000s, I went back to sprints to see the difference myself. And it was more than noticeable. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that sprint is bad in any manner. I'm just saying that I preferred the feel of P1000s over my sprint. I'm not a race car driver nor have any actual experience of racing. But the brakes of P1000 were like a no-crust pizza. Same feeling all around. Also, SimMagic claims that there are a total of 27,648 elastomer combinations that you can choose from. And that is a lot of customization for the brake feel, if you are into that level of precision. Now let's move on to adjustability. These pedals offer a nice balance between the level of adjustability and ease of access. You don't have to disassemble or go through a lot to get things right. I know mostly all pedals in the market offer varying adjustment levels, but this one in particular is my favorite. Let's talk about the pedal spacing first. The pedals can be moved around, but they have limited space to do so. You have 5 holes for the throttle and brake and 6 holes for moving the clutch. And that is what confuses me. I don't get why SimMagic didn't opt for a single cutout instead of these holes. Personally speaking, it shouldn't be that big of an issue, and the pedals are sufficiently apart to my liking. The pedal face height and pitch angle can be adjusted quite easily too. For pitch angle, you need to loosen these allen bolts, and like I mentioned earlier, I really like these subtle markings for easier angle adjustment across all three pedals. Changing the springs is quite easy too. Just remove any preload, push the cylinder out, open the cab, swap the springs, put it back together. 
Changing clutch springs is a bit different because of the two-way movement, which sort of simulates a bite point. All in all, I would say in terms of adjustability, I would give it a solid 9. And on ease of access, it is a solid 10. But enough about the technicalities and explanations. Let's talk about the overall feel of P1000. So I have been using these for almost a month now. And initial impressions with the throttle pedal was, it was very light out of the box. So light that you could press it all the way down with your pinky. Even after adding preload, it was... Eh. But after changing the springs, the resistance was marginally better. I generally prefer long travel distance on pedals, but you can adjust it to make it a bit short. I drive a lot of manual cars mainly because I love doing heel toe. And if keeping the whole PHTS vs spring debate aside, it was loads of fun. Brakes are something which I really enjoyed mainly because of the feel from the elastomers. The compression of brake felt quite heavy initially, but over time when I got used to it, I started to love it more and more. So much so that I'm still trying to get my Husingweld sprint to mimic the braking feel. You can swap between its load cell sensor and angle sensor. I have set mine at around 45 degrees of actual force and the feel is absolutely bonkers. It is progressive and feels quite natural, especially with a longer travel. When I was calibrating the pedals, I came across this force adjustment slider. What it does essentially is apply full braking force without pressing the pedals all the way, or even halfway. I pressed mine merely half an inch and the software registered it at 100%. I'm not sure why one would use it, but if you want it, it is here. Also you get to pick whether you want the percent of pedal travel or the force measured in kilograms. And lastly, the clutch. It has your standard two-way movement which mimics a clutch bite point. And like most pedals, it goes unnoticed pretty quickly once you start driving. It's not that big of a deal and isn't something I really care about. The movement is smooth and I love using it. Apart from all the good stuff that these pedals offer, there is one other advantage which no other pedal has as of now. And that is the ability to play arcade or simcade games. Well, it's more of SimMagic's software advantage, but you get the point. If you plug the pedals in the canvas port of your base, you will be able to play the games which are notorious for wheel support. The software now reads the pedal connected via canvas port. Though it isn't needed, I usually do a quick check to see if everything works fine. Now just hop onto your favorite arcade game and assign the controls. I'm running Crew 2 here, which barely supports a proper DD. I'm not sure if it works with VJoy or not, but this process is far easier. And that's pretty much it. Tune the force feedback to your liking and have fun. The same can be achieved on SnowRunner, only on this one you need to invert all three pedals. Then assign the controls and other stuff to the buttons on your wheel and you're done. Aside from the modularity, this is something which makes me want to stick to these pedals. Obviously playing these games on an expensive DD setup sounds a bit foolish. But like Selena Gomez said, the heart wants what it wants. Also there are a lot of games which don't have a proper wheel support such as Crew 2, SnowRunner, Crew Motorfest, Forza Horizon 4, 5, Dakar, etc. All of which can be played on a SimMagic ecosystem. As a person coming from Thrustmaster TX, I'm quite happy to see that I can finally play SnowRunner again. Anyways, like I was saying, because this system exists, I can count on SimMagic for providing support for future games with not so good wheel support. 
And with pretty much everything covered, let's talk about what Sim Magic did and final thoughts. Now there are a lot of good pedals in the market which are built like a tank. And lately all of them have been really good. Most of them will probably last a long time. But in a sea of pedals, why would you want to consider pedal A as opposed to pedal B? There can be a lot of reasons such as cost, availability, aesthetics, usability, customer support, etc. etc. But I think that a pedal has to have some unique and distinguishing feature. What do you think? From a normal consumer's perspective, it is very easy to get lost in marketing shenanigans. But what Simmagic has done with P1000s is admirable. It is like Santa Claus with a bag of gifts where the gifts don't seem to be running out. Regular or inverted 2 or 3 set pedals, haptic reactors, RGB strip, hydraulic brakes and now hydraulic throttle. I mean, yes, you still have to pay for the add-ons, but in my opinion, all of this under a thousand dollar does seem like a good price. I would say that the competitors of P1000s are mainly Husingweld Sprint, VRS and maybe the Simlab XP1s. But the main reason for purchasing these should be the modularity. The add-ons are what makes these pedals better than Aladdin's lamp. Okay, maybe not that, but I feel confident in saying that these are the best pedals in the market. Even if you're keeping it vanilla, my statement stands. That's been it. I've been Darth Snape and may the downforce be with you.